Hello, everyone. Welcome to Online Seller UK podcast. My name is Prabhat, founder at Online Seller UK. And today we'll be talking about, about accounting and about helping the UK seller expanding into the US market. And I'm joined by Matt. Matt is the founder of a Capfords Accounting. And I'll let Matt dis, um, introduce himself and the company and we take it from there. Welcome to our podcast, Matt. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Yes, as you said, uh, founder of Capforge uh, Bookkeeping and Tax, a U.S.-based accounting firm uh, with about 1,200 e-com seller clients that we work with. But a good portion of them are actually folks from overseas, including the U.K., uh, who've set up business here in the U.S. And that you know, comes with its challenges and, and and things to you know stay on top of. So. Uh, that's something we've got a lot of practice helping our clients with who have coming from overseas to set up in the U.S. Yes, no, that's good. So obviously, because of the size of the market, it's it's uh, it's an interesting market to expand on. Um, Plus, Americans buy anything, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. Okay, that's good. So, um, so I think for for sellers need to. So, for example, let's take an example of UK sales. They've started, they're expanding rapidly. Perhaps they're testing the European market. And then, you know, where, do, where is the next market to go in? Australia, Canada, US. Obviously, US being the largest market there, it's it's obvious place to try and do it. But it does, like you said, it does come with the struggles and challenges. So but when is this the right time? So when is the right time to go and set things up in the US? So my suggestion is if you have a successful business in the UK or, you know, also maybe selling in Europe and other places, uh, but you're not sure how well the product will translate to the US, then do some light testing, right? Launch your your most successful SKU, the one you think will work best in the US from the UK and see how it goes. If you decide that there's good traction and you think that that will be a profitable product for you and you've got some more in your catalog that would make sense to bring over, at that point, you might find it is easier and more efficient and less expensive to operate a U.S. entity uh, having goods shipped directly to the U.S. instead of via the U.K. and back and so on and operating from as a a U.S. business uh, might be worthwhile. If the test doesn't go as well as you hoped, or it just doesn't seem like it's going to be worth it, then obviously you don't, there's nothing to unwind. You haven't set up in the U S yet, but that would be my suggestion is just make sure that what you're planning, uh, you don't spend a lot of upfront time setting things up and then to have it not work, you've still got obligations as far as tax and paperwork and things to unwind what you've just tried out in the U S. So test it from where you're at, if it's successful and you think there's a good path forward, then consider the U.S. setup as a way to improve the efficiency and profitability there. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, no big loss um, back to business as usual in the U.K. And, and wherever else you're already selling. Excellent. I think that's uh, make, makes sense on that one. So you mentioned about efficiency and profitability. So uh, let me put those two things and then other thing which is the taxes together so how does having a us entity make a difference for the efficiency and you mentioned about profitability and the taxes so if you could take all these three aspects and talk to us please yep so uh, by having a us entity um a lot of times it improves your logistics especially depending where your products are coming from if they're coming from china or asia Uh, Coming direct to the U.S. and having a a setup there, a 3PL that can take the products and then forward them on to Amazon or having them go straight to Amazon from there in the U.S. uh, can work better and you can get lower cost oftentimes than shipping all the way to the U.K. and then sending it back to the U.S. Um, Another benefit is if you can set up a U.S. company, then you can do pretty much all the transactions in USD. There's no currency conversion loss or inefficiency there. The only time that you need to move money back to the UK is the one time when you distribute profits back from the US entity back to the UK. So just one transfer instead of potentially more than one or multiple currency conversion issues. Um, And then from a tax standpoint, if you set up correctly in the US, you actually end up owing no taxes in the US at all. All the 
profit that you would generate in the U.S. can be sent back to the U.K. and you just pay it one time there because of the tax treaty um, and, and reciprocal agreements between the U.S. and the U.K., if you do it right. Now, there's lots of ways to not do it right, end up owing tax both in the U.S. and then again at home. Uh, but there is absolutely a, a very, you know, definitive way to set up in the U.S., to, but at the same time avoid any U.S.-based income tax, which is certainly uh, beneficial versus, you know, some of the other ways you could set up and do it where you end up paying more um, than you would if you set it up right. Okay. So, um, because I don't know actually on that, and I, I've not done research on that, um, is the U.S. corporate, we call it corporate tax here. So is it is it at the same level like in the U.K. or is it different? So if you're just you talking to... about corporate tax uh, yeah. in the U.S., if you set up a, a C-corp where the corporation itself pays the tax, the tax rate currently is 21%. Okay. That is a historic low. It's used to be 28% and then at other times even yeah. higher than that. And that's the the rate that the company pays when the company then benefits the individual owners there is a, a second tax so it's a double tax in effect if you set it up that way now with an overseas entity there are other ways to transfer funds and and uh, hopefully avoid some of that double tax uh, but most of our clients find that um, net net they end up paying less bringing it directly home to the uk than paying some tax in the us and then, you know, uh, offsetting some of that on the UK side. But again, it kind of depends on your long-term plans. We do have some clients who choose to pay tax in the US, but then they keep the money invested here, uh, purchasing real estate or, or other investment opportunities outside the e-commerce business and things. So, you yeah. know, there's there's a million different variables as to what's going to make the most sense. Um, but most of our clients ship the profits home and just pay tax in the UK and find that to be uh, the best overall strategy for, you know, most individual sellers who aren't looking to be, you know, the next Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or whatever. The, what I'm hearing between from what you're saying, it's not one solution for all by the look of it. It has, it, it, it has to be a different. So you're nodding ahead. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll towards the end, I'll, I'll obviously prompt like uh, in a, every podcast in book called sort of thing. So that's important, I think, in this aspect. So um, let's talk about some of the problems um, that, you know, selling in the U.S. that can be avoided. So if you want to give some tips on that, that'll be really helpful. Yeah, I mean, one of the, if you do set up an entity in the U.S., the single most important thing I would say is that you want to set it up under one owner. Uh, because there is a significant tax difference between a single owner entity and a multiple owner entity. Even if your business consists of two or three partners in the UK, you'd still want to set it up under one person or one entity's name in the US because the tax differences between a single person and, a, and more than one person is substantial. And we've had people come to us after the fact saying, oh, I've already set this up, you know, uh, Bill and I are partners and we're both 50-50 in the U.S. Oh, that's that's not good. So uh, my best advice is to get the information prior to taking the action because it's much easier to do it right the first time than to try to unwind something that has already been set up non-optimally. So that's kind of the single biggest tip. And then the second thing is if you sell through Amazon, the good news is, uh, I mean, they take a lot out in fees, but the good news is they handle all the sales tax, which is the U.S. version of sort of a, you guys have VAT, yeah. we have sales tax. So if you sell just via Amazon, Amazon now handles all the sales tax collection and remittance on your behalf. You have nothing to worry about, don't have to register for it. But if you come over to the U.S. and sell through a platform like Shopify, uh, or you set up your own website with your own back end or, you know, WooCommerce or something via WordPress. Now you do potentially have sales tax collection obligations. And the challenge with that is it varies by state. We've got 50 different states. Most of them collect sales tax, not all of them. Some of them collect sales tax at different rates. So if you sell into New York City, the sales tax rate is different in New York City than into uh, Buffalo, which is another city in New York or something. So it can very quickly get 
mind-bogglingly complicated. So it, not to be scared about it, there's software solutions, and obviously people manage to sell just fine in the U.S., but that's one of those things to be also aware of and uh, is an added complication to selling in the U.S. that not everybody yeah, it's, I mean, even in the U.S., it's right. It's it's not something a lot of people really understand well or have mastered, but certainly if you're coming from outside the U.S. and it's not a concept you're particularly familiar with that can quickly seem overwhelming. So again, it's a good place to get good advice on how to handle. Okay, excellent. So uh, thank you very much for talking to us. So we're towards the end. Um, and then... Uh, I'd like to mention, you know, if if somebody wants to talk to you, which which I think with the accounting mostly people do need to, because everybody's situation is different, um, like you mentioned yes. before. So, where is the best place to find you? Um, yeah, so the best place to find us is our website, capforge.com. It has information about us, our services, our pricing, and then obviously ways to get in touch via email or even phone calls are fine um, and have that initial conversation. What are you planning? What What's particular to your circumstance that would, might make a difference in the advice or decisions? Uh, and then, you know, obviously, if we can provide further service from there, great. If not, or you need to think about it, you know, no problem. The consultation is always free to start. Uh, but I do think, you know, it's definitely something to make sure you, you're well informed before you start the process, because it's, again, it can be very expensive to, uh, you know, get started and then find out you probably went down the wrong path and having to undo that. One other point I will make quickly about one of the benefits of having a US based business is if down the road you expect that you'd want to sell the business by having a US based business you now have access to the entire pool of US buyers who in most cases use government backed loans to acquire businesses, SBA loans, they're called. If your business is only based in the UK, of course, you can still sell to a US-based seller or buyer rather, but they are no longer able to access that capital. So by having a US-based business, I think you have a much better potential of an, a, a more valuable exit to a much bigger buyer pool than by having a UK-based business only. Um, so just something to think about with your longer term expansion plans, a lot of the value locked up in e-commerce businesses is the value of the business itself. And there are lots of buyers interested in acquiring e-commerce businesses, particularly in the U.S., but for them, it's much easier to buy a U.S. based business, even if it's just the shell and the legal entity and it still basically operates. The owners are still in the U.K. versus, though, just having the business based only in the U.K. or anywhere else. Uh, that really shrinks that potential buyer pool. So just one more pro in the bucket of why you might want to open a U.S. entity. Yeah, absolutely. I think it works pretty well for for lots of businesses who ultimately plan to exit yes. and sell out. So that well, that's the aim of so quite a lot of business. So yeah, good point. Good, valid point, Matt. So thank you again for your time today. And then I'll hopefully speak to you soon. All the best for yeah. now. Thank you. Bye-bye.